I think there are three things there. I think the first of those is that people sometimes assume that because their firewalls have um, DDoS within their data sheets, that they'll provide them with protection from um, all aspects of the DDoS threat. Firewalls can deal with some kinds of DDoS attacks, but unfortunately they can actually be targeted by some kinds of DDoS attacks. We've seen state exhaustion attacks which specifically target firewalls and load balancers since around 2007, and obviously they're not going to be able to deal with some of the more sophisticated application layer attacks and large volumetric attacks which cause saturation of internet connectivity. So organisations do need specialised solutions and services to deal with the DDoS threat. So the second aspect of this is really um, around organisations just simply not believing that they are likely to be targeted. Unfortunately though, pretty much any organisation that's connected to the internet can now be targeted by a dis by a DDoS attack and it's becoming increasingly likely that this will happen. If you go back a few years ago and you ask people what was what's behind DDoS attacks, many of them would have said um, things like extortion. And extortion is still a key motivation behind the DDoS attacks that are going on out there. But the motivations have broadened significantly over the past few years. We've seen the rise of ideological hacktivism, which has meant that pretty much anybody can be targeted for any reason, whether you're affiliated with a government organisation, a political party, um, or even something in the scientific community around GM crops and things like that. And we've also seen the rise of um, you know, com uh, competitive takeout, where one organisation effectively launches a DDoS attack against one of their competitors um, to try and steal business. And more worryingly, we're starting to see DDoS attacks now being used as a part of broader threat campaigns, broader attack campaigns, where they're being used to disguise um, financial fraud or distract from things like data exfiltration. So the third aspect of this is that when you talk to um, Many organisations, they still, when they're talking about DDoS attacks, think of a DDoS attack as a big burst of traffic that's going to cause congestion on their internet connectivity, what we would call a volumetric attack. Unfortunately though, there are other kinds of attack vector out there, application layer attacks, state exhaustion attacks, that can cause damage very, very quickly to their internet facing services. Organisations need um, a solution deployed at their network perimeter that can spot those attacks quickly and can deal with them proactively before there is any impact to their services. People often forget that after a DDoS attack and especially an application or state exhaustion attack, there is often a significant service recovery time. When the attack is mitigated, services simply won't come straight back immediately and often, um, often some things need to be restarted or reset. You need a a solution deployed at the network perimeter that can proactively stop these attacks before there is any impact to the availability of services. These solutions, though, can't necessarily deal with the large volumetric attacks. This is where the cloud-based services come into play or the service provider-based services come into, pay, come into play. So organizations do need layered protection in order to deal with the DDoS threat that's out there now.